Begum, a toddler from Tripura, India, was rushed to the hospital last year after her head swelled up three times its normal size. Little Runa suffers from an extreme form of hydrocephalus, also known as water on the brain. Surgeons at New Delhi Hospital were able to reduce the swelling, but were skeptical she would survive for very long. But against all odds, one year later, Runa has made some progress. She cannot walk yet because of the weight of her head, but she can crawl. Runa's doctors remain cautious. Nobody can say whether she will be able to live a normal life or what kind of life would she lead. But uh, the way she is recovering, uh, I think she should be able to do at least some things. Runa's doctor believes further surgery is needed if she is to continue to improve. Last year, Runa spent over 105 days in the hospital. So her father is uneasy about the ordeal of more surgery. <laughs> Join us today to discuss Runa's amazing stories. The chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery at UCLA Medical Center, Dr. Neil Martin. Welcome back, Dr. Martin. And I'll tell you this, we've all seen hydrocephalus, you a lot more than any of us. I've, I've never seen anything quite like that. So what are your thoughts when you see Runa's original pictures? Well, you know, Travis, we're lucky in the United States that we almost never see this mm -hmm. extreme sort of case. And Jim will know. Oh, yeah. He's monitoring constantly in well baby visits mm -hmm. for head expansion. Yeah, we measure the head every day. I have the nurse do it, and then I repeat it when I see the little baby. I treat it as a vital sign, along right. with blood pressure, right. height, and weight. So, Jim, I heard that her head circumference got to 37 inches. That's... Yeah, a basketball is 29 inches. Right, that's just that's massive. immense. Yeah. That's like a beach ball. Yeah. Have you seen a case close to this? I've never seen a case like this. But I, I talked to one of my colleagues who worked in South Africa before he came to UCLA. He saw those cases there. And they're, they're, they're more common in developing countries mm -hmm. where they don't have great right. mm -hmm. pediatric care, where they don't monitor the kids until they get really extremely affected. Let's show people, Dr. Martin, what we're yeah. talking about so that people understand mm -hmm. when we mention hydrocephalus, how it happens, why it happens, and what it is. So the, the cerebrospinal fluid, the brain floats in this fluid, is made in these ventricles within the brain. And the fluid is produced there. It's pumped out goes through cha channels in the brain and over the surface of the brain where it gets returned to the circulation, right back into the bloodstream. If a blockage occurs, then the fluid continues to be produced. It builds up inside the ventricles. They expand, and in a child whose cranium still is not fused, it's not rigid yet, the whole head will expand. So we, we only see that head expansion in children because in adults, the skull which is eight bones fit together, are all fused together, and so the head doesn't expand. And actually, in adults, this can become life-threatening within hours in certain cases. This diagram, frankly, it understates the severity of what we saw in that video by tenfold. This fluid cavity is expanded almost out to the skull. The width of the brain that's left in a child like this is under an inch. So it's really Which explains a filled with some CSF. of her developmental delays. It's like a mm -hmm. huge, essentially, balloon filled with fluid. In, in... See, that's a, that's the tragedy in this case, because at that point, when the cortical mantle, the substance of the brain, is thinned out so much, it's not going to come back. The problem here is that that pressure has eliminated brain cells and nerve fibers permanently. So the ideal here is obviously to prevent it from progressing to the point as it did in Runa's case. Well, what are things that, that parents can look for um, in their children? One thing, you know, uh, the, the soft spot, that fontanelle, if, it's, if they feel like it's bulging out, that's something, you know, as a pediatrician, I always just feel that, and just a parent should just occasionally feel it, kind of know what the normal feels like. Um, the child, if, if that pressure starts to build up, the child will usually get lethargic, feeding problems, uh, sleepy, things like that, or pretty much any kind of downturn in development. 